Welcome to the electrifying world of the wireless penetration test phase. Think of it as your hackerspace in the wireless web. This phase is all about getting inside the invisible pathways of wireless networks. Just like a digital locksmith picking the virtual locks, it's a thrilling adventure where we explore, assess, and secure wireless environments. In wireless pen testing, we check the strength of the Wi-Fi security. For example, in this video, we will check the strength of a WPA2 PSK wireless network. But there are many more ways to test a wireless network besides this, depending on that particular network. Wireless pen testing is a field of its own. So this will only be an overview of the whole process. So some prerequisites we need to talk before we get onto the pen testing stage, pen testing video demonstration. Uh, this course will not cover the different types of wireless networks and security standards. That is a prerequisite that you have to know to understand all of the stuff that we will do in the practical section. And uh, because this course assumes that you have uh, a good amount of networking knowledge, for example, CCNA or a network plus. And then there are some things uh, in wireless networks in Wi Fi that we need to know that what is an SSID, BSSID, or N channels. So I will just give a brief overview of these. SSID is basically a service set identifier, and that is normally the name of our. That is usually the name of our Wi-Fi network. BSSID, basic service set identifier, is the MAC address of the Wi-Fi adapter, the Wi-Fi network adapter that is serving the Wi-Fi. Basically, the network that we're going to attack. And channels are different frequencies. So, because Wi-Fi works uh, in the form of radio waves, and uh, when you have different Wi-Fi connections, if they have the same frequency, if the waves have the same frequency, those can clash with each other and they can cancel each other. So that's why we have different channels. So each network is on their own frequency and other networks cannot uh, collide with it. And uh, different uh, multiple amount of Wi-Fi networks can coexist and work in a harmonious manner in a space because Wi-Fi cannot be contained uh, by physical or material boundaries. So the tools used for this demonstration are, first of all, we are using a TP-Link wireless adapter. I will show you the picture of that also. And it is used to capture the network traffic so that we can uh, pen test it and crack the password. And uh, you can, in the video, I will show you other options also. So you can use any wireless adapter that works in Kali Linux or any Linux uh, that you're using for penetration testing of your choice. And uh, it should support monitor mode, which is the mode we use to capture traffic. And then we are using the uh, AIR framework. Basically, these are different tools, AIR MonMG, AIR AeroDump, AIR Replay, AIR Crack. And these all are going to be used in our cracking process. So this is the Wi-Fi adapter I'm using. This is uh, very cheap and also uh, very common, but it has different versions. And that is something I've discussed in the video. But uh, this is not going to be about setting up uh, the adapter in a virtual machine or in a containerized machine, because there are different ways to do that. And depending on the adapter you have, uh, the process can be different. This, the video will just focus on the demos, practical demonstration of wireless cracking. So I will explain the hacking process uh, briefly. So first of all, place. We place the wireless card, the adapter we're going to use. In this case, the TP link adapter into monitor mode. So it can monitor the network traffic that is passing. And I've discussed that in detail in the video also. And basically, it is different from the managed mode we have in uh, we our devices use when uh, because our devices also have like our phone and laptops also have Wi-Fi adapters. 
but they don't support monitor mode and usually they are in managed mode and what managed mode does is that it can just connect to a client but it cannot listen to the traffic that is in the air so it can eavesdrop uh, the network traffic the wi-fi traffic then we go to the discovery stage in which we will uh, start monitoring the network and uh, start monitoring different networks and then we decide what is if if we already have a predefined target if there is if the target is within our range or not or uh, if we don't have a target we can determine a target based on our the information we get when we uh, put the card into monitor mode and start uh, eavesdropping on the network communication in the air so there are two important pieces of information that i've discussed before that we need to uh, collect from this information uh, about our target and that is the bss id which is the mac address of the wi-fi network and the channel its frequency and then with this information when we have this we go into select where we select that particular network when attack and then start capturing data from that and basically uh like again I, in the video i have discussed this but when we start capturing the information we are actually uh, eavesdropping on any information, any communication that is happening between that network and its clients. So we are just trying, we are acting as a middleman and we are collecting all of that information. And when we have the information about the network, we perform a de-auth attack or a de-authentication attack. And what it does is that this is in some cases optional. Uh, I'll, discuss this further in the video also but basically what it does is that uh, when we want to capture the four-way handshake uh, the communication the because we are cracking the wpa2 psk pre-shared key network in which the password it, password is shared the client shares the password with the uh, wi-fi network so we're going to capture that handshake so that we can capture the password and uh, then we can crack it. So we deauthenticate a client deliberately. So when their connection is disconnected, we uh, they try to connect again automatically or deliberately. And then they when they connect try to connect again with the network, it will perform a handshake. So the client will share its password again with the server or the network, Wi-Fi network. And uh, that way we will. Uh, being the eavesdropper, being the middleman, we will uh, snatch that key or copy that key from there so that we can crack it on our machine. And that is the next step. We capture the WP handshake, basically the key that is being shared with the network. And then we uh, attempt to crack it with uh, using brute force or dictionary attack. But in this demonstration, we will use a uh, word list as part of our dictionary attack. So that is the whole hacking process of wireless uh, networks, specifically WPA2 PSK, which is a commonly used in organization and households. Hi, welcome to the demonstration of wireless penetration testing. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to track the Wi-Fi password for WPA to PSK Wi-Fi. So first of all, to uh, hack this kind of Wi-Fi, basically this is the WPA PSK2 is the common Wi-Fi, uh, common wireless standard that is normally used in our households and in most organizations. So first of all, crack any kind and to crack this kind of wireless network, you need a Wi-Fi adapter with monitor mode. So you cannot use a built-in laptop Wi-Fi or mobile Wi-Fi. You need to buy another adapter. So I'm using this adapter for the task. This is TLWN7221 from TP-Link. It has four versions, so uh, you can use any of them. 
and these work on Linux. So these also work on Kali Linux. But because of the difference in versions, uh, there are different ways to uh, make it work in Linux for heck for Wi-Fi cracking. So I won't go into detail because uh, about setting it up because each version has different method to install it on Linux for Wi-Fi cracking. And then there are other chipsets, other adapters you can use. So this is the TP-Link device I, I'm using. And it has this chipset, basically this is version one. So I'm using version three. So it has a different chip chipset basically. It, this is the one it's, it, it is using. So, and uh, for that you need uh, some drivers. But tutorials are available on the internet. So you can, about setting up the adapters in Kali Linux, you can check those tutorials that are widely available on the internet. So I won't go into detail about setting them up. We will just start the hacking. So first of all, uh, this is from uh, this is from where we begin, and this is gonna be the same process for any adapter. So before this, you're gonna set up the adapter, and we have this command iwconfig, and with this, you will check whether your adapter is detected or not. And uh, Sometimes the adapter get, do get detected, but they have uh, they have problems when you change the mode of the adapter to monitor mode from manage. So this is the default mode, manage mode, where we just access the Wi-Fi, but we cannot capture handshakes and we cannot listen to the network traffic. So first of all, we will change the mode from manage to monitor because we want to monitor the wireless network we want to hack and uh, i will go into that later i will show you uh, the router i'm going to hack the wi-fi network i'm going to hack but first we're going to set up this device the uh, device to monitor the network okay Our first command is if on fix, we will check. So, because this is a virtual machine, uh, so I'm using two adapters. This is the basic just for internet connectivity in case something goes wrong during the process. So, you can install stuff, but you can uh, do that on, even on a physical machine with just the adapter. Because once we change the mode from manage to monitor, it's going to capture the traffic. So this is our WLAN 0. And as you can see, it doesn't have an IP address. So because this is the one uh, running currently. And because we are using this for hacking, just for Wi-Fi cracking, we don't need internet running on it. To clear it. And now what we need to do first is to Turn the adapter down. So before any configuration changes, before turning anything down, we need to turn the adapter off. So with this command, if config WLAN zero our in Wi-Fi interface and this down command, I give it the password and it is done. And now if we check. If config, we don't have the wireless network, so we have turned it on. And now we will use this command. IW is basically for intent for wireless, and we choose the adapter and mode is equal to monitor. So this will change the mode from manage to monitor. And this with when our device is Using this mode, it can actually crap, capture the network traffic. So it is not in a client server, you can see mode. It's, it won't connect to the target. It will just capture the traffic. It is like a, like an eavesdropper. It will just capture the network traffic from uh, different networks in its vicinity. So different devices at different ranges. So in its range, it will, in its range, it will,
it will capture all the devices in its range. So now we will. So now we will press enter, and the mode should be changed. And now we will use the command we used before. And this time we will change it down to up, and this way we will activate our Wi-Fi interface. Now we have our interface running again, but this time we can see the difference that last time it was managed but now it is in monitor mode so it is ready to capture network traffic and then we can crack it crack start the cracking process okay we'll clear it there's also one more command we need to use and this is Airmon and G check it. So basically, Airmon uh, is a tool. It is a set, actually, a collection of tools Air, Airmon, Aerodump, Aircrack. This is a collection of tool starting with uh, they have the prefix Air, and these are used for Wi Fi cracking. So there are different tools for different things. So basically, Air, so basically Airmon is Air Monitor, and this program helps us in uh, managing the Wi-Fi cracking process. So the check kill command is basically used to check for any network services running that can uh, conflict with our adapter and uh, it will kill, kill it. So it can capture the traffic, monitor the traffic without any hindrances. So basically, uh, WPS applicant, this is the normal Wi Fi process that runs in the background, and most of the time you have to kill it for if you want to use your device for Wi Fi cracking. This is the process you will normally find in your Linux machine. So now that we have everything done, we will start the process. So, first of all, uh, something we already discussed in our theoretical portion is that our first phase is to start capturing the network traffic and see whether our device is detecting the network we want to crack because when we start the pen testing process we already know our target so in this case i'm actually i actually have a home router which i'm gonna crack and don't bother uh, copying this IP address because this is just a local network so this won't help anyone crack into my own network so I will log into the settings this is my Wi-Fi network so the name is sneaky and this is the password and why I'm showing you the password before is that uh, because when we're going to crack it, we need to know that whether we crack the right password. So this is the password I'm using ABCT1234. This is this password is one of the common ones. So uh, WPA PSK2 uh, has a eight character minimum minimum character policy. So you have to use minimum eight characters and it can go up to 63 characters. So most of the people use eight characters. They don't want to set up long passwords and that is actually a weak thing because those passwords can be brute forced or there are dictionaries available different lists for example the rocky list which is very popular it is one of the most uh, the biggest list uh, found in a data breach that's more than 14 million passwords we can use that list for cracking also because this is gonna be mix of a dictionary and brute force attack because we're gonna use a dictionary we're gonna use a list but it gonna it's gonna check it one by one and that's a lengthy process if you have a strong password so i'm already giving a hint about the mitigations or hardening if you want to harden your wi-fi network you need to use strong and lengthy passwords 
So this is the pass. This is the network, and this is, and as you can see, it is using WPA2 PSK pre-shared key, and this is the password it is using. So I'll just leave it as it is, and now we'll start the cracking. So we will use the Aero Dump NG again. This is part of the Air framework and this is basically used for monitoring the network and then trying to capture the handshake the four-way handshake which we will discuss a little bit later the video of the network to crack it so we will start the monitoring process on our wi-fi well as we can see it has started capturing different Wi-Fi networks and for example even if the process starts and your adapter is not catching anything you can always try restarting your Linux installation and then try the monitor mode process which I showed you the four step process again setting the device to uh, monitor mode and then you can try again and it should be able to pick up different networks so first of all we have the bss id this is basically the mac addresses of the devices and then this is the different information related to the network its power its frequency data packets and again this information is very important so so two pieces of information are very important First is the MAC address of the device and then the channel. Channels are basically different frequencies on which the network is hosting its wireless connection. And this is the encryption cipher it, it is using. Authentication is PSK, basically pre-shared key, which we discussed before is uh, the password is shared uh, when the device, when a client tries to connect to the wireless network. So, and that is actually the way we capture the password. So we, which I'll explain in detail when I show it. And these are the names of the different networks. So we're, as we saw before, the network we're gonna crack is sneaky. And uh, this is again the information it is using. So we need to do two things here. I'll make another tab and we can open BIM or Nano, any text editor of your choice. And we can name it Wi-Fi info dot text. I'm going to insert it. And we need to note the piece of information. So for example, BSSID of our target which is basically this one I can actually stop this and then I'll paste it the second thing is the channel info so we need to know the, the channel so this is this was using channel one this is easy to remember and then we can also note down its name just to be sure and i will save this information so we have this information here and now we have the information we needed to start the hacking process I can what we can do is to start capturing the handshake so now uh, to capture the process we will use the information we got before from the network monitoring we did before so we will use the 
payro dump ng tool we used before so this time we'll use the bss id switch and this will actually tell it that we don't need to capture the whole network traffic uh, in range we just need to capture traffic from this network so it will pinpoint its monitoring capabilities monitoring faculties to this network and now we're gonna copy paste this here so this is the second step of our hacking process and now we will give it the channel we can also use channel or c let's give it one and then the network interface which is which on which our uh, wi-fi adapter is working so we will start this we will give it the password and now it is capturing the traffic from this network so any client that is trying to connect to this network it will try to capture the key so basically i will sum it up i will summarize the process all this works how the wi-fi cracking process works so basically in terms of when you have a wired connection you are the client and server uh, or the network or client is connected with a wire so you cannot eavesdrop on it and even if you can the uh, the information is encrypted but that is the same thing in the wi-fi network but wi-fi is open so you cannot go into somebody else's house and uh, eavesdrop into their wired network but you can eavesdrop on their wireless network because wi-fi is based on it uses the air as a medium for communication and uh, it uses waves so basically you can capture those waves because those are not contained by if someone if my neighbor or if a company is using a wireless network their building or their rooms cannot contain their network so i can uh, just capture those waves if i an adapter just like this with monitor mode and then when they are communicated communicating i can capture that communication info and how wi-fi works is basically is that a key whenever a wi-fi client tries to connect to the network they exchange the key with the network and when the network approves then the connection happens so every time they have to connect to the network they need to share their key which is the password so the client tells them like i have this password and then the network verifies it from their database that the password is wrong or right or wrong and then it tells the device and then uh, if the password is correct the connection is found so in this process what we are doing is with our adapter we are capturing that password we're capturing that handshake uh, from the air from the two client and networks connecting with each other communicating with each other and we will try to crack it so as we can see this is the network and these are the clients trying to connect to it so i actually have this device this is actually a mobile phone and if i have the right password it should capture it so this is basically the mode it has right now it has not captured anything because the devices are already connected the handshake was already done before we started the monitoring process so i we have two options now either we can wait for the device to disconnect and when they connect again they will have that four shake a four way handshake again and we will have the password and it will tell us in under this notes column or we can actually deliberately disconnect the device of our choice which we can do and then we can make them connect again uh, whenever we want and then when they share the key we can capture it so that's the thing we, we will do uh, because again these are waves we can actually tamper with the waves we can create noise and we can cause uh, discommunication and this is actually called, called a wi-fi de auth attack de authentication attack we can actually de authenticate the device which is a type of a denial of service so not just not uh, just that 
we can crack the wireless network. We can also cause a denial of service in the network. So I will do just that. I will clear this. Use the arrow dump command again, but this time we will give it the T auth switch and zero. It is always zero. We need to give it the zero number zero. And then again, we'll give it the router address we want to attack the communication which we want to disrupt. So we will give it the address and the client we want to disconnect so because i have this device mobile phone and i want to disconnect the communication between the router and this device so i will give it that and then the wi-fi adapter we want to use so okay maybe we made a mistake Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, big mistake I've done. Actually, we don't use the aero dump framework. Uh, aero dump, we use a replay. This is again part of the air framework for Wi Fi cracking. So we use this. So we have, we checked aero, air crack. So basically, we checked aero dump, air mon for monitoring, dump to get to monitor the network and capture the traffic a replay is for the de authentication attack and then we will also use air crack for cracking so this is the one okay we again another mistake it it is a replay basically it uses one hour so now it is sending packets to disconnect the client this client so now my mobile network should not be able to and i cannot actually show you but we will see something here so basically we have another network which has connected and we have the key but this network which we have is not able to connect and because it's trying to connect it has actually shared the key so i will stop this because now we have the key i will stop this attack and this just this was just for the show uh, for the show we actually this is a live capture and we have not saved it and because we have not saved it we cannot crack anything so we will do another thing we will actually save the capture we use the minus w for writing we will write the capture into some files and uh, we have a handshake folder already and i will save it as i will sh uh, save it there as psk something And now I will start the capture again. And I will try to connect to it. And we have the key here. Again, even if some device does not connect, as devices are already connect, connected, we can de auth them, de authenticate them, and then we can capture their keys. But it's okay. so these two need these two need to be running simultaneously when you want to capture a handshake because we have already have a handshake it is telling us in the notes that it has captured the pmk id the key pre-shared key for this network so we don't need to do anything further and now we will stop the wi-fi handshake capturing process and now we can see that we have the captures saved. So, dot cap file you can run this in Wireshark, and this is basically the packet capture file. You can run it in TCB dump, T Shark, Y Shark. We check the traffic if you want to analyze it, but we just want to crack it. So, to, for cracking, we will use this.
and there are other files csv and different log files uh, for different tools for different uh, pertaining to different things but just for this course and video we just need to know that this is the most important file for our cracking so now we will start the cracking process so as you can see i already have the talk to text uh, list ready which i already told you that it is one of the most comprehensive credential list that was ever found and uh, it contains probably more than 14 million credentials uh, it is always good to use this one for cracking you can use other list also you can make your own list depending on your target but when you don't know your target or if you know you want to just want to try uh, something on your target it is good to use this but because this is comprehensive it will take a long time so it is not recommended it is always recommended to use the top 100 bad password or top 1000 bad password list something uh, because brute force attacks takes a lot of time cracking takes a lot of time and it is not considered a good practice to use bigger lists because nobody has the time and any attack that takes a lot of time and is still very unpredictable or you don't have certainty about the result in your favor uh, as a penetration tester or as a hacker you don't want to use it. So this is the last uh, you can say this is the last hurrah for a penetration tester or hacker but in case of wireless uh, testing because people tend to use common passwords and stuff we use this otherwise if you can get their password in some other way we will try that through social engineering or any other thing so now we will crack the password and for that we will clear it and we will use this tool air crack again part of the air framework we will give it the list which is drop you and we would give it the MAC address of the device, the network going to crack again the BSS ID, and we will give it the capture file. We capture so basically, what it does is that it will try to crack the network handshake with words from this list. So if we if our password Wi-Fi password is in this list, it should be able to crack it. So now we will start the cracking process. And it can take a lot of time depending on your list of so as we already saw in the beginning of our video, and we can check that again. That what a crack has found is the same password and because it is telling us that it has found it so basically it has tested it that it is the original password and we can now use it to connect to the network so we have actually cracked the wireless network as we can see abcd1234 abcd1234 is the password so that was all for the wireless cracking process. Hope you enjoyed this demonstration. In this section, we looked at wireless pen testing methodology and how we can crack a WPA2 wireless network. There are other types of wireless standards that we can crack, but that is for another day. Uh, I will urge the students to explore that on their own. There are different blog posts, different uh, things available in the form of books or on the internet or in courses. Uh, that are advanced for this course because wireless uh, cracking involves a lot of uh, knowledge and that's why I won't I have not covered those in this course but uh, I will urge the student to improve upon it but they have learned and then uh, look at those things if they are interested in pen testing wireless pen testing so see you in the next video happy hacking